What's up guys, welcome to the artclasses.com. Today I am going to show you how I paint this scene of the master and apprentice. Um, this one is probably I got inspired by watching Game of Thrones or something. So it's come out with like um, the Night's Watch or uh, Men in Black. Um, anyway, this one takes me about 30 minutes and um, turns out okay. Um, usually I use Photoshop and a Wacom tablet in two uh, large and also have a medium one so this depends and if you've never seen my video before uh, there's a link up on top right corner you can click there's a easier tutorial you can go to my channel there's a from a regular pencil drawing to a beginners Photoshop stuff and anyways um, well let's get started so this one I start off with the blank canvas with the, I think it's a sort of like a blue gray color in the mid tone, a little bit dark. Then I make a layer and trying to figure out what I'm trying to do. A poly, um, it's gonna be a figure. So that's uh, poly the main dude. And I guess he's wearing a black cloak and a bunch of fur on him. That's what I was thinking. And in this one, I experiment with uh, a bunch of new brush that I just download from a bunch of people. Can't remember really where, but uh, you go to DeviantArt and you can you know download a bunch of uh, people's brush. Um, usually I'll download, them, uh, I'll download them and then I'll forget put in a photo for a while and then I'll just install them whenever I get time to modify my Photoshop. and. Uh, making some changes uh, so now I'm adding another figure using different kind of brushes this guy is gonna be a student so the, or the like a apprentice to the big guy and you also have like a, a dark fur cape so these brushes are really sketchy which I really like and different kind of brushes have different purpose so now I'm going to the layer behind it and adding some snow using default flat uh, this one I use the most because uh, I know exactly what it does um, and I can have more control over it so a lot of people ask me about brushes um, if you are really new to Photoshop and you haven't been painting for over a year or a couple of years something I would recommend master the default brush and or you can like you know using the round default and squeeze it and make it flat um, and then you learn how to control opacity and uh, some people like to have pressure sensitivity some people don't it depends I always have my pressure sensitivity on and then you will get the feel of how to you know get used to the brush so now I'm laying down the far back background which is kind of like an ice mountain or a snow mountain and then putting some dark value onto the sky and now I'm gonna focusing on the character I'm just gonna add the skin color in there and I think I have my um, dodge on or something so it's kind of when dodge so now I turn my brush back to normal and then two hands so I was thinking maybe he's uh, pulling a sword out I don't know if it's a val 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 valerian steel <clears throat> or not but um, just and then this kid probably carrying some bow and arrow or something so I think they're traveling somewhere up north and uh, this old veteran uh, is showing him some trick so I use the lasso tool for the uh, whenever I try to get something a little more uh, having more sharp edge or something that require more precision um, last two is really good for that 
then having the other end of the sword uh, or the shield, the sword shield. So on the sword, it's uh, on a different layer because I need the lasso tool to get it to work and make it look straight. Then I'm making a copy of the front snow to make the snow look lighter. So basically it just kind of make the opacity higher when you make a copy of the layer. Then I put some dark rock on. Just so that it doesn't look so um, too white or too empty. Just has some a little bit add to the environment since uh, I didn't plan to add um, any tree on these. Then I'm gonna come back to the character and add a bit more texture to his cloak, making it look a lot more furry. Then add some dark spot to his boots then add some um, belt and some utility belt onto the kit and the lighting I'm thinking the lighting well, kind of wanted to have the I kind of want to have the light coming from the um, the right side of the screen basically so if you see the uh, the part of the skin that I'm painting right now and the kid's face so the lighting is coming from the right side of the screen then it's giving him a, a gray stash, a stash and beard, make him look somewhat older. Now I'm cleaning up his face a little bit using texture brush. And trying to, I'm trying to get the facial feature on, but it's just gonna be a really simple uh, facial feature since it's uh, kind of far away, and I'm gonna do it really quick. And then I add some gray hair onto him. So when you do a far away facial feature, I only just put in like eye socket and then the shadow that you know. So I just uh, figure where the light and shadow would fall. Then I'm just kind of focusing on that. Like now I'm just. Uh, darkening or putting a shadow over on one side of his face then putting the eye socket and the nose and then he's turning to the right side of the image so he's turning away from or looking forward basically maybe they saw something and then as I said I just basically put you know the part that have light on the face of I mean light and shadow on the facial feature like put the shadow on the eye socket and then uh, shadow on the nose then it adds some wrinkle in his forehead and then his eyebrows which is all gray and then continuing his beard on connected to his hairline And add some light onto the face a little bit more <clears throat> and darken the corner of the eyes a little bit and light onto the hair so the lighting coming from the right so I'm trying to get the lighter value on that side basically and every time you have pain you have to be aware of where uh, most importantly where the lighting direction is coming from so you can um, pick the color and the value uh, according to the direction of the light and I'm cleaning up his silhouette a little bit 
in the initial sketches like everywhere like when you start doing the initial get initial sketch you just kind of lay down to get you know a base or the construction um, or the figure and then once you go in and trying to refine it then you're gonna have to go in and try to erase something and add on some value or some design getting the proportion to look right is really important and then the pose um, and the way they stand it doesn't have to be anything fancy you know just some natural pose can convey a lot of personality and attitude of the character mm -hmm. now I'm adding more light onto his gauntlet and to his shoulder pad his shoulder pads I'm thinking it's gonna be little stud or something like that and then adding some dark shadow underneath that shoulder pad and on the right under the arm because that's where the cast shadow is happening and I'm darkening the the left side of the body and then adding some lighter value on the right side to convey the light and shadow part <coughs> then adding more shadow underneath um, where the fur cover up from his chest or his um, cloak so you can separate between the fur and his uh, cloak and now I'm adding a metal stud onto the gauntlet and to the uh, shoulder And a lot of time when I'm doing a speed painting, I'm just always thinking like just suggestive and trying to get more detail on the where the lights hit. And then in the shadow, um, usually you don't see that much of a detail in the shadow. So now. So now I'm zooming in and trying to add a little bit more um, mustache or some uh, facial feature on his face and I'm trying to add uh, some facial feature on this kit also which um, still not successful I'm just gonna leave it that because I mean when every time I when I try to add it it look a little bit cartoony and I want to not make it look too cartoony so I'm just gonna add a basic like a little shadow and that's pretty much it so I keep muddling with it I socket nose I think that should be okay uh, sometimes it you add a little too much detail on um, the figure on the character you have to look at the overall image it's like is is the detail look too much in comparison to the rest of the image um, if it is then you do you shouldn't add too much detail so the whole image has to be uh, consistent but sometimes it's kind of appropriate if you add more detail onto the focal point but then on the focal point if you add like if you go a little bit too far it can make the image look a little off so you have to have uh, know when to stop and certain amount of details is enough to convey what it is and if you want a detail then you can have to you know, if you have too much detail in one part then you might have to kind of distribute it all over to make it look consistent throughout the image so now I'm adding a little you know tattered part of his cloak and um, some more texture on his cape or his cloak behind then a bit more texture on the kit so it's a lighter value so you uh, just to give it more light onto where the lighting is shining which I flipped the image so the lighting is now uh, onto the left side all right so now I'm just using dodge tool to 
try to get try to get the more lighting onto his face and his sword yeah, maybe add some design onto the sword shield I mean scabbard sorry I think that's what it's called and then I'm adding a, a bow right behind the kid just a suggestive and a string so that we're almost done and now I'm just gonna add some uh, particle and um, snow powder or dusk or something to create some depth of field and create some uh, atmosphere onto this image and then I'm thinking I'm just gonna add some snowfall and some snow on the bottom of his boot and some lighter value to create like movement you know like they, they step on snow and, and maybe some of the snow um, got onto his clothes and this outfit just a little bit they got a little white out because of course when you like walk into the part that have a lot of snow then all your clothes are gonna get uh, some part of snow on and some powder and I'm yeah, giving him some more hair make him a little look a little bit more rugged Maybe some um, Give his beard and mustache a little frost. Maybe they've been walking for a while, so they got really um, rugged and get a lot of snow on it. Mm -hmm. Then add some a little bit more stuff under his costume for the kid. Add a bit more texture. Put some snow on him. And sometimes it could be a little too much, so I delete some of them. And I move his hand onto his hand. Uh, his right hand onto the front so it look, it looked like instead of standing it looked like he's making a, a walking movement and then he has it he have his back um, probably some supply or tool on behind him on tying around his hip it's like when you create a character and uh, or doing a design so you have to think of um, the purpose situation and what are they doing and if you if you have like a character like you say you're going out on the woods or in the snow and they going on a mission or something so you have to think you know what what kind of stuff you should put on the character and um, there may be some additional stuff like you know some supply uh, luggage bag weapon uh, or you know a lot of things that you can carry or you think you would carry when you uh, go somewhere and it's kind of fun to think of you know what what this character might be carrying with them and adding on to the character to make it kind of make it look a little more uh, add some realism to it and it has to kind of make sense like what they would be carrying and the kind of clothes they wear in a certain climate. So now I'm adding a little bit darker shadow onto the face of the old man. Giving him some iris. And then maybe a little bit too much, but just slightly so you can see where what direction he's looking at. And then for the kid, um, I don't want to add it. And I decided to take them out. <laughs> There's some dark shadow onto the kid's face. 
changing the nose a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it's almost there. And add some highlight on the side of the face. And on the hair also. To kind of bring his face um, up a little bit more. And I decided to have his um, lower part of his face being covered by um, his scar for his cloak or something because I thought that would look a bit more interesting kind of different from uh, the older guy gentleman all right so this is it and then add some snowfall and here's the final um, image for the night watch or the master the apprentice in the snow walking so here's the final image if you have any question um, on digital painting and Photoshop or art in general just post them down in the comment I usually answer them every time I upload the video also if you are interested in more painting and uh, in-depth tutorial just click on the right corner with the you know icon then you see um, the premium tutorial they most of them are uh, more than two hours long and show you a bunch of stuff from the beginning to finish and they are in-depth and a lot more detail because I spent a bunch of time on it and also if you are interested in workshop and private lesson via Google Hangout uh, then click on that top right corner for the icon also and then you follow the link and you see the detail of what is the workshop and the private lesson class uh, there is all about all right well thank you for all your support over the years and um, thank you for watching the video and yeah feel free to comment whatever down there and have a wonderful day uh, I can't really speak today but all right bye